Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome back to Above the Knee podcast. I'm in a little bit of a different area, but we've got something very big for you. As always, we are joined by Mr. Jay Extended. Jay, how are you? How are you feeling? I'm absolutely buzzing. I'm not even going to let you finish. I'm buzzing. Right. Introducing Vicky Lasada. Vicky, thanks so much for joining us. Um, how are you? Have you, you been all right? I'm okay. Thank you. My pleasure. been at City now for a few months. How have you found it? How you found it? How is life at City? Um, I'm actually so happy. It was a um, difficult start, but... Now I feel I adapted much better, feeling more comfortable on the pitch and off the pitch. What are your sort of goals at City? Like when, when you joined, what, was, what are your goals? I mean, as I said, uh, we had that first game against Real Madrid that we didn't expect to lose. But you know, football is like that. It puts you in, in front of uh, hard situations. Now we're working hard. So now our goal is... Uh, make them positions to be on, on the next Champions League next year. And obviously you were at Arsenal... I want to say six years ago now and yeah. to now. Have, have you seen a big difference in like the development of the women's game in England from like your time at Arsenal to now? Yeah, massive change. Um, I think now the, the teams are more professional. Also, when I look at the girls, the players, you can see they're athletes. Any team has very good players, talented players, but also hard worker players. And then in terms of TV and all the marketing and just the investment of uh, BBC and Sky Sport, it's been massive for the women's football. And the Euros coming up, I think, is going to be also a, a massive uh, change to add to the football in this country. Obviously, um, last weekend we had the derby, um, a sold-out academy stadium. How, do, how does that feel as a player? How, like, Because I'll, I'll be honest, as a fan, like, it, it feels a lot better and it's like this is amazing but like um, for you how did that feel like when you heard the news that it was sold out how did that make you feel I mean it was amazing and I know it was my second derby but I have to say playing at home uh, sold out with all our supporters here and the way I actually the way I, I prepared that game was okay so for me I'm sorry because I have to name teams but for me this is my Barca Espanol Oh, okay. For me, my my whole life, it was an special game. It was a different week. You know, you could see on the, you could feel the atmosphere. And then when I, I had the opportunity to play that game, and I was on the pitch, and all the supporters, and we also won with that crazy goal from Caroline last minute. It was a day that I I, I won't forget for sure. Um, you spoke about the Champions League briefly just then about our, your goals to get back into Champions League this year. What, what was it like winning, winning the Champions League? It was one of my dreams and it came true. <laughs> and But there was also a lot of work behind uh, the two years before we won it. And I wanted to do it for the first time with my club where I've been there for 15 years. And it was, I mean, it was very special, but not just because we won, just the way we did it. I think Barca is showing an amazing football and there's also a lot of work behind that. You know, the investment they're doing is always in players from, from La Masia and then adding a few foreign players that can give them something different. And it's great to see how some of the players have developed so much. And now they're top players in the world, like Alexia Putella, Saitana Bomati, Sandra Paños. Uh, loads of them I could say probably half of the team and that's amazing to see how all that work it just is a success now do you think the disappointment of the first final spurred you on even more in that game like did, did the failure help boost you on sort of thing yeah 100% that was painful it was very painful and and the first thing we 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 did back then was talk to the manager and say we don't want to feel that anymore we are open to do whatever it needs to to come back here to another final and definitely be ready to win it. That final against uh, Olympique de Lyon was very, very painful. Having the experience of winning the final as well, do you reckon that's like invaluable with Art City, like to be able to tell the girls, like, listen, like it feels amazing. And it almost, I mean, everyone wants to win it. But to know someone and you to be able to vocalise it, do you reckon that is a huge motivator? Yeah. I mean, 
I do speak with them. And especially the week I got here, you know, they were asking me because uh, we just want it. And I want to bring that experience and all I've lived through football to help the team. Um, I, now that I've been here for six months, this team has got very talented players that they're just learning and it always is a process and sometimes it needs time. I always say when Pep Guardiola came here, the fans were expecting to win next day and everything takes time. Now look at them. They're showing an amazing football and winning. So I think it also takes, you know, you have to leave some things in your life. You have to focus on being here, maybe not having time with your friends, with your family. And that's what we did with Barca. Sometimes we had one day off in three months which I say a quick, but it was very hard. And I think City is the perfect team with the perfect players to do something very, very similar, but it also takes time and, and work in the right direction. Question on everyone lips in England. I'm going to get an insider. Um, how, how do you stop this Barcelona team, your the old Barcelona team? What was what, um, when you lined up from, what, was you, what, what would be worrying for you guys? I mean, um, <laughs> you want me to do an analysis? <laughs> yes, please. We're going to get my whiteboard here. I'll wheel it in. <laughs> I mean, they love uh, possession. And I know they're not happy without. When they don't have the ball, they're not happy. But they're basically very good on having the ball and, and, and playing them long possessions. I think they show a little bit of weaknesses also with... Uh, when you... The crosses in the box. Uh, I think Arsenal actually... A score with a cross from a cross and and basically you can make one mistake because uh, um, they score basically but but I think I think it's gonna be interesting to see the next draw of Champions League and see how it goes. Speaking of um the Arsenal Barcelona game, you work there as media. How did you find that compared to playing? Weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually weird I mean I'm being honest because you feel like you should be there on the pitch mm, yeah. I mean, so it's weird but it's a great experience and you know through football I'm very lucky to to, to as I said experience that as a player uh, as a commentator or I guess how I did and I think it's good to learn from different perspectives this season we've seen like Lauren Hemp take go on leaps and bounds almost um, have you seen a change in her in training from when you first joined to now? I think she's one of the very talented players we have and great ambition, great mentality. I think she's still young. She needs to learn. But I'm always telling her to make that good decisions on top of the pitch because as soon as she gets that, and it's about time, I'm pretty sure she'll get there. She's going to be one of the top 10 players in the world because she's very young. And, and the way she comes every day to training, the way I think she takes football as her priority is going to make her one of the best players in the world. You're playing with um, so many talented players. Do you feel like you have an eye for when you see someone, you go, this person's going to be a player? Like, can you, can you tell early in someone's career now? I mean, I do, but football, for, for you, it can be another kind of player. I, I do have my style of players. I don't I do know which players I would pick if I was a man. <laughs> but yeah, definitely there's also small things that in my experience with Barca, we change and we focus a lot and there's small details. And it can sound silly, but it's not because when you get, when you do a masterclass of small details and you already have the talent and the work and the mentality is when we won Champions League, basically. You speak a lot about the mentality of both yourself and the game. What what sort of what sort of planning goes into that? Like, because I feel I well, I know like it's not something that happens overnight. Almost, what what are like the the key pillars almost of the, your mentality? I mean, I could say too many things, but um, definitely you have to set individual goals and goals as a team also. But I think there's also a bit of dreaming, bigger, even sometimes bigger than, than probably things that you, you might think you won't be able to get. 
And also for me, I mean, I'm coming from a country that they love football, the passion, watching football every day, playing football on the street when I was a kid, you know what I mean? So I think it's a bit of everything. For me, football is my life and everything I do is to be better every day in training and 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 in, in the game, in the competition. But maybe not all the players want to leave other stuff on their lives just to prioritize this. So for me, my mentality is 100% on this. And, and with the years, you also, with experience, you just get better. But definitely the, the, the mentality you go to every day to do things is, uh, for me, is a 99%. How important yeah. would you say street football was in your development or was it kind of like something that you had to change as you got professional? Oh, that's so sad that we're losing that because now the kids don't play on the street. Mm. And you know, um, how you say, I don't know, if, like being that kind of cheeky player, I say. Yeah. Okay, yeah. No, no? yeah. I think sometimes you have to, I always say, you have to leave the game. You have to put passion, but also know, control the game, you know, I don't know, maybe sometimes you have to stay on the floor for five minutes because you're winning one meal. Mm, yeah. Yeah, you want to win. So you prioritize everything just to win. And them things I definitely learned a lot when I was a kid, playing in school, uh, playing on the street every day. Amazing. You've had a, a very successful career, I want to say, having a very successful career. What's been, what's been the hardest part of your footballing <laughs> journey from maybe being a kid all the way up to now? What's What's the part that's tested you the most? Um, my first thing that I could say is when I had to leave Barca and I went to America before joining Arsenal, I didn't want to leave Barca. And I remember it was my first year as a captain. I was 23, 24. But the women's football wasn't professional in Spain. And I already won four leagues. And I, and I felt I needed something better. I could stay and be so happy captain man and enjoy but I knew I had to leave if I wanted to to play football and, and basically 24 hours a day so that was very hard for me going to America I was 23 didn't speak a word of English like nothing <laughs> far from home like 10 hours is not like England you know and and that was my first thing and then after the year well I think for the footballers, when you get injured, sometimes coming back is harder. I had a few big injuries, but now I'm happy, healthy. So a new experience. Has that always been the most important thing for you, like pushing yourself in football? Like even then, like coming out of your comfort zone yeah, is so definitely. difficult, but like yeah. the, ability, the ability to think bigger picture and be like, no, I, I want to be able to do this 24 hours a day. Yeah. I mean, yeah, 100%, because one of the other things I always had in my head when I left, I didn't want to leave England either, because I knew I was going to... So the Spanish league became professional, and Barca wanted me back to basically be the leader of the new project. I couldn't say no, you know, it was my club. I started when I was 14 years old. But I was like, I know if I go to Spain, that league it wasn't as good as the English back then. So I was like, I'm going to Spain and I'm not going to be as good as I could be here. But I still did it because my heart made that decision. But I always knew I was going to come back here because for me, my opinion, this is the best league, the one that I like most. And I didn't know when it was going to be. So after I won the Champions League, I thought it was the right time to come out again of my comfort zone and go and live a, another new experience again. How do you stay motivated after doing something like winning the Champions League to keep going and to keep like pushing yourself? I say, I say when, when what I felt after winning the Champions League, I say that's what I'm looking for every day again, because in the end you won the Champions League, but next day you have to wake up and do the exact same. And, and I got it, I got my Champions League. And there's one thing that, I hopefully have the opportunity um, in the next years. I'm going to be here and he's winning a, um, an English league. You said that this, the English league is your favourite. How, how come? Is it due to like your style of play or the competitiveness? How come? Why is it, why is it ranked so highly for you? 
Um, no, because I don't think it's my style of play. <laughs> really different to them. Um, but I think that competitiveness and I don't know, it's like the Premier League, like the, the men's Premier League. It's just different the way the passion that people shows here and and the competitiveness of the league, the players, you know, you are in the game and in Spain, if you're winning 3-0, you know the game is practically over. Here is not. <laughs> Here you have to play 90 and 100 minutes. And and I think that's what actually makes me made me make that decision when I came here. Yeah. Do you think the league's more competitive now? Yeah. I think the players now have prioritized football. Also, it comes with the investment of women's football on becoming professional. And as I say, this league has gone much quicker. The players are athletes. And then there's new players coming up from the development teams that are very talented. And that comes, it's coming now, I'm sure, because the work is being done properly. And it's about time that we'll be, we will be having even more and more good players. Who's the toughest player you've, you've come up against? I feel like that's a question you're probably always going to get asked. But... Against or with? Oh, let's do, let's do one of each. Let's, let's do, do against yeah, both. First. Ada Hegerberg, very good player. Really? Very good player. What, what, what is it about her that you just... That final, I was just like, oh, she can play with men. It's just power, finishing, turning, mentality, header... It was just a 360 degrees player. Like she had everything. There are days you play up against people like that and you're like, I don't know how we're going to stop this person. <laughs> she you always want to be like methodical. I felt that. Like, no, I felt that back then. Just, and I think the girl, the girl the same as us. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And what about player you played with? Oh, too many, I think. I mean... I don't know. I say I take, I'm going to just say I take the mentality of Carly Lloyd when I was in America. Yes, a beast mentality. It's just a machine of competing every day. I take the um, <coughs> passion, Alexia Putellas, and the quality. And then from Barca, I mean, in terms of quality, they're all very good players. I think Mariona Caldente has something very special. She just makes, when she plays, the game is different. And I hope she she gets what she deserves in the future, actually. Um, you mentioned it way, way, way back in the conversation now. But let's, um, let's talk women's Euros. How important do you think it is to the women's game in England that the Euros are being held in England? Um, I mean, it's, it's massive. And the way I've seen how they've organised the English League this year with TV, marketing, the, the programs they do, the shows they do, it's just amazing. It's like the men's football in Spain. And that doesn't happen with women. So for me, it's the perfect place to do it because I know they're going to be giving their 100% and it's going to be amazing. And it's true that I might be missing a few big stadiums in, in the Euros. I have to say that. I hope I'm, I don't get much intro <laughs> but, oh, um, I think it's very good and the way that the teams are developing and hopefully more teams that uh, have teams in the men's side uh, they start with the women's side also because I think it's important to in the end you need money to start something mm. and it's important that teams that already are in the men's league uh, join the women's league and and I think for the for the English girls it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna create a massive impact also for for kids in the country. And finally, who who, who are you going for to win it? The Euros. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely definitely looking forward to see Spain and England. It's not because I'm Spain and I'm in England. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's two teams. Definitely, Spain has to. Um, like before it was like, okay, Spain is here. Let's see how they do. But I think now it's time to say we are here, but we are really here. And now we want to win. And, and I think England, I really like the new manager, uh, the Dutch manager. And I think they're going to do really well. Amazing. Vicky, thank you so much for your time. Um, we've really, really, really enjoyed it. having you on.
Thank you, you guys. It was my pleasure.